And, and as I've been looking over the last year for like models for how to do that, I've been sort of looking across time and I've been trying to find like other societies to see if they might have had better and saner ideas than we have about how to help um, creative people sort of manage the inherent emotional risks of, um, of creativity. And that search has led me to ancient Greece and ancient Rome. Um, so stay with me because it does circle around back. But um, ancient Greece and ancient Rome, people did not happen to believe that creativity came from human beings back then, okay? People believed that creativity was this divine attendant spirit that came to human beings from some distant and unknowable source for distant and unknowable reasons. The Greeks famously called these divine attendant spirits of creativity daemons. Socrates famously believed that he had a daemon who spoke wisdom to him from afar. The Romans had the same idea, but they called that sort of disembodied creative spirit a genius, um, which is great, because the Romans did not actually think that a genius was a particularly clever individual. They believed that a genius was this sort of magical divine entity um, who was believed to literally live in the walls of an artist's studio, kind of like Dobby, the house elf, um, and who would come out and sort of invisibly assist the artist with their work and would shape the outcome of that work. So brilliant, there it is, right there, that distance that I'm talking about, that psychological construct to protect you from the results of your work, you know? Um, and everyone knew that this is how it functioned, right? So the ancient artist was protected from certain things like, for example, too much narcissism, right? If your work was brilliant, couldn't take all the credit for it. Everybody knew you had this like disembodied genius who had helped you. If your work bombed, not entirely your fault, you know? Um, everyone knew your genius was kind of lame. And uh, <laughs> this is how people thought about creativity in the West for a really long time. And then the Renaissance came and everything changed and we had this big idea. And the big idea was let's put the individual human being at the center of the universe, right? Above all gods and mysteries, and there's no more room for like mystical creatures who take dictation from the divine. And, and it's the beginning of rational humanism. And um, people started to believe that creativity came completely from the self of the individual. And for the first time in history, you start to hear people referring to this or that artist as being a genius rather than having a genius. And I gotta tell you, I think that was a huge error. You know, I think that allowing somebody, like one mere person, to believe that he or she is like the vessel, you know, like the font and the essence and the source of all divine, creative, unknowable, eternal mystery is just like a smidge too much responsibility to put on one fragile human psyche. It's like asking somebody to swallow the sun, you know, it just completely warps and distorts egos and it creates all these unmanageable expectations about performance and I think the pressure of that has been killing off our artists for the last 500 years. And um, if this is true, and I, I think it is true, the question becomes, you know, what now? You know, can we do this differently? Uh, maybe go back to some more ancient understanding about the relationship between humans and the creative mystery. Um, maybe not, you know, like um, maybe we can't just erase 500 years of rational humanistic thought. And, um, and there's probably people in this audience who would raise like really legitimate scientific suspicions about the notion of basically fairies who follow people around like rubbing fairy juice on their projects and stuff. Like I am not probably gonna bring you all along with me on this. Um, but the, the, the question that I kind of want to pose is, you know, why not? Um, why not think about it this way? Because it makes as much sense as anything else I have ever heard in terms of explaining the utter maddening capriciousness of the creative process, a process which, as anybody who has ever tried to make something, which is to say, as basically everyone here knows, does not always behave rationally.